Hello everyone. It's Alana. I am back again. <laughs> More projects to show you guys. I'm just going to pull up the video on my end and watch to see if there's anyone here. There must be a couple people. Hi, Patty. How are you? It's good to see you here. I see there's a few more. I can't see who yet, but I can see that there's a few of you watching. So I will show you guys what I have to No, It was just me. We were, we knocked the stand over <laughs> while we were trying to get going. So, you know, always something fun going on. That's what happens when you're excited about uh, what you make. <laughs> just going to move this a little bit. I can see now that it's a little off. So I have more than one project that I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you this one. Hi, Linda. And I said your name properly today. I didn't call you Elaine. I will shove this just a little bit back this way. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the how to for this one. And then I have another card that I am going to show you as well that does feature one of the sale bundles. So it features a sale bundle and um, some non-sale paper. So I'll show you guys that one. I'll complete it here with you guys. So I don't have it fully finished because I want to show you the technique, which is the same technique as here. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> and hello, everybody else. Thank you guys for joining me. So he's a cheerleader too. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the same technique that I'm going to do here. I will do on this card here. This one is going to feature the sale bundle. So I'll show you which one that's going to be. And I have done one. I just don't want to show you guys that one until it's um, on here, until I'm making the one that's going to go on here. All right, so some of you guessed correctly as to what product I would be using. You guessed, I think the sale bundle and the pastels. So you're right. I figured I'd come back and show you guys the pastels again. So I've got them. So we have these here. I'm not using all of the colors that I used the other day, but I am going to use these three here. So the um, Coastal Cabana. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. So I'll use the Coastal Cabana, the Granny Apple Green, and I think I called this Pacific Point the other day with you guys, but it's actually Night of Navy. So I will use, whoopsie, I picked up the twine, those three here. And then on this one, I am also going to use the Coastal Cabana, the Night of Navy, and then the, I think it's Mossy Meadow. Yeah, Mossy Meadow. So I'm going to use that one as well. So for those of you who missed the other day, the Soft Pastels Assortment, they come in this box with all of these colors. I'm just going to pop these other ones back in here because I don't need them for today. But if you want to see them all used, or not all of them, but almost all of them, you can go back to the video I did, I think, was it yesterday, with um, the All Together DSP and the rainbow that I colored with those. And I used a different method yesterday. So today I'm going to show you something different. And then I did do some research from last night to today so that I could show you guys how to do that method that is sort of like brusho. I'm not going to actually do it with this wave, but I want to just show you guys what you could do if you wanted to step it up. And then I'll show you the simplified version that I just did with blends as well. So I'll give you guys a couple of different options. All right, so can you actually grab the rhinestones too? And I'll have those to put on this one when it's finished. Thank you. I have a little helper, not a little helper here. He's a a, a bigger than me helper but anyhow okay so this one here is with the waves of the ocean so I'll show you guys that product there I think I've talked about the waves of the ocean retreat lots of times but I have not actually showed you guys the flyer of the product so I'll show you that real quick and if you guys have the waves of the ocean product either coming to you or if you have it already or if you're going to be doing the retreat I feel like you guys are going to want to add the soft pastels assortment to your collection if you don't already have them once you see this here how I did that it's pretty quick and easy so the Waves of the Ocean product line has, it's the Sweet Collection you can get for $109.50, which I feel like is a really good price, considering all that you get. You get the entire bundle, so that's the stamp set and the dies, 
and then you get the DSP, the blue foils, and the rhinestones. That's what comes in the collection. The bundle separately is $71. The DSP separately is $15.75. The foils is $13.75. You get two sheets of each of the 12 by 12s. And then the rhinestones, waves, basic jewels, which come in Coastal Cabana, Knight of Navy, Pacific Point. It says six colors so it must just be shades of those colors but they're beautiful i didn't put any on my project tonight but if you taught him to use a spoon he will always be little <laughs> Aww. all right so let's get making this after i quickly show you guys which bundle i'm going to use on here can you actually find the stamps with art gallery for me the dies I mean. so i'm using the art gallery stamp set on this card and this is the hand penned dsp but i wanted to use a flower stamp that was on the 20 percent off sale it is excuse my reach it is this one here art gallery it is regular 76 dollars and on sale for 60.75 some of you already have this one because you did the retreat with Laura and I back last January, so more than a year ago. So if you did that one, you probably have the art gallery bundle and you can do this technique if you have some chalks, Versamark and your stamp set or even with any other flower stamp sets that you guys have in your collection at home. Um, no, that one's artistic. Sorry, Ethan. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started with this one, and I'll show you guys everything that I have here. So I have a Knight of Navy card base, and then I have a textured, I'll give you guys the side. Somebody said their sweet should be coming. Your sweet should be here soon. All right, so this one is five and a half by eight and a half. It's just your basic card base. I scored it at four and a quarter, so I'll put that out of the way. And then I have a four by five and a quarter white layer that I have textured with the painted texture. I thought that it looked kind of neat with the waves, so that was my strategy there. And then I have some of the DSP here, which I actually forgot to prep, so I will have to do that real quick with you guys. And then I have two of the layer that the waves are on so that I can show you guys the one method to use the chalk and then this other one here. And then of course I usually prep a few of these because chances are I am going to mess that up when I stamp the greeting. And then I have a stitched rectangle. It's probably hard to see the stitching through the camera, but that's what this layer is here. I just kept the layers pretty basic for this one. So first I have a little dish here. You can see that there is some chalk in there. I'll show you guys how I got that there. And I have a scrap sheet as well. And then I have my stamp. It is, I used, whoopsie, the big wave one. And I need Versamark. So this one is a technique that has been around for a really long time. If you guys have the old chalks, I know some of us were talking yesterday about the old chalks that we used to have. If you have those, then um, you might know this technique. This is Poppin' Pastels. And I need something sharp. So I will use the tip of my scissors. Or if you have the take your pick tool, you could just use the spatula end of this, but I'm just going to stick with my scissors here. So first I will just put some, I'm gonna do Coastal Cabana first. I will use the most of this. So you just take your chalk, I just wanna make sure you guys can actually see this. So I have to hold on just a second to make sure that it actually shows up in the view. Okay, we're good. So just take your pastel, and just scrape some of that off so you can see that it is just flying into the dish there and I'm doing this in the dish because I want to show you guys um, the next method that I wanted to show you I'm going to use this container after and I'll use what's left over in there to do that so that's why I'm putting it straight into here so now I have some of the Knight of Navy 
and then I want some of the granny apple green and that's good. Can I bug you, Ethan, to find that piece of DSP I had left over that I was going to put here? It's the two inch piece. Okay, sorry guys. Now I need to take my, yeah, that's the one. Thank you. And then the uh, two by four inch strip of white, please. <laughs> I had helpers prepping and uh, they don't know that there's a hidden piece of paper back here. You guys might remember me showing you that technique the other day, but uh, when you just look at the card, you never know it's there. So don't know to prep it unless I specifically say so. All right, so I'm just doing Versamark all over the wave stamp. And then I'll take this and I'm going to just make sure, stamp that nicely on the white. This is just basic white cardstock. So you can't see that anything's there, but I know that my image is now stamped on there with the wave stamp. So then next what I'll do is dip into this chalk here and I'll apply it to my image there. And you'll start to see the image pop as the chalk is applied, which is why it's called Poppin' Pastels. So first of all, I'll just start applying some of that there. I put a little bit of the granny apple green in there. I didn't want to do a lot of the granny apple green, but I liked the tone that it gave just a little bit of it. I do have a wet paper towel here too, so I can just dry wipe my hand off before I go into the next color. I didn't do that right here. And I got a little bit more green there than I wanted. So then I'll just dab a little bit of navy there. And then I'll pick up some more of the Coastal Cabana. So I'm just mixing a little bit of navy, a little bit of Coastal Cabana, a little bit of the Granny Apple Green. And I'm trying to keep just one finger per color. But when you have you just tend to uh, see there, I didn't remember. And I mix the colors. So I'll just keep picking that color up out of the dish and I might need more Coastal Cabana because that's the prominent color that I used. And then I wanna put a little bit of the navy down in the bottom. And I might even come over a little bit here with the navy. So it's pretty simple, this technique. And I'll just gather up as much of the Coastal Cabana as I can. There we go. I'm trying to keep it mostly over top of the image because I don't want too much of the color to spread beyond where the image is. Some of it will, and that's okay. But there we go, so look at that. The daubers would work too, yes. And I've actually seen where I'm going to grab another piece of um, white and show you guys another way to do this. But you definitely can use daubers. And if you have enough daubers, you can do one dauber per color if you want to do that. And then you would just want to keep, say, one set of daubers for chalk and then one set of daubers for regular ink. And then even you guys have seen me use the daubers with the white craft ink mixture. You, those ones you can rinse out. I have found that it rinses out of them fairly nicely if you're using the craft ink, but just keep in mind what type of um, coloring medium you've used in that dauber previously. So that's this one here. I'm gonna just see if I can get a little bit more into there, give it a little bit more green tone, just a tiny bit. I liked how it gave it a little bit of extra detail. There we go. But isn't that super cool? Now, I'll just take, have just a tissue here, and I just wanna wipe off as much off the edges as I can. But you could now take hairspray, an aerosol can, and then spray over top of that. I'm going to leave it, because it doesn't seem to have too much come off. But if you were concerned about that and you wanted to make sure that your image stays, you can use um, aerosol hairspray as a fixative. So that's one option. And I'm going to quickly just cut another piece here so that I can show you guys another method. Me as well. If you guys don't mind. Okay. So 
So let's do this one more time. The nice thing too with doing this this way is that you don't have to clean your stamp off every time because you're just using Versamark. So if you were applying all these different colors to your image, you might need to clean it off in between each one, but it's just Versamark, so we're good. So I wanna show you guys another way. And this other method will give you a little bit bolder, I think of a result. So there's that. Now you can actually take your chalk and apply it straight to the image. This one is a little less forgiving in being able to wipe off the excess because going chalk direct to paper, if you go over the edge of the image that you can't see, it's going to be harder to wipe that off. So you want to be, I'm trying to keep this within the image while not being able to see it. So you can see there that you can do that. Look how bold that is. Now, I'm gonna see if I can just, I probably should have come in with a little bit of the accents first before the um, Coastal Cabana really covered most of it. Now I just, again, I need to try to be mindful of where that image is without being able to see. So I'm trying to follow the direction of it generally. I think I'll stop there and then you can just rub that in with your finger again. But that's nice and bold. Look at that. You get about the same result and you could just use a dauber to rub that in. If you were doing the direct to paper technique, then you could just take a dauber and wipe it all in. I apologize, my shadow is um, blocking the light there. So that is the different ways that you can apply your chalk to your Versamark image. I love this technique. Now, I wanted to show you guys the other method of um, applying a little bit of this detail first. So with this one here, I just took my blends. That's what I'll do for you guys today. I just added a little bit more detail in the background with blends so it kind of looked like bigger splashes beyond there. But if you wanted to go to the extra treble and get extra detail in here, I'm gonna show you one extra step that you could do to this paper first before you do the wave. So this is where this dish and water comes into play. So you will need to, I do have to disappear for a second to apply water, but I wanted to show you guys the dish first you can actually, you know what, I'll go put water in first and then we'll see how the different colors turn out. I will be right back. Sorry about that. So it's actually better to put the water in first because by having the leftover chalk in there, you can see that it's just dissolved into there. So if you're going to do the water and chalk method, you'd put your water in first and then you just take your chalk and put that in there. And then I'm gonna throw some granny apple green in there and I'll throw some of the Knight of Navy in there. Now I do need my spatula again. So I'll take my paper. This seems crazy, but drop it in there. And then you can fish it out with your take your pick tool. And then you can get this little, I should have moved my paper first that I actually want to use there, but then you can get this neat effect to the background of your paper first. So then you'd need to let this dry really well because this is super wet. And then you could stamp over top. There's too much granny apple green in there though. Can you see all that green there? I hope you guys can kind of see that. I'm trying to avoid having it go right over top of these cards. So I would definitely go more Coastal Cabana, less granny apple green, but you can get a neat wash over your paper first and then stamp over top. So I'll just put this one aside. We do not want this one to get anything else soaked. So depending on the image that you're using, you could create that fun background to it first and then stamp over top. 
And I will just get rid of this so I don't end up with that everywhere. All right, so now I'll create this card for you guys, and then I'll show you the other card. Actually, you know what? I may as well show you guys this one first. I am uh, changing my direction here. All right, so now this one here is from Art Gallery. It's this image here. And again, this is gonna be the same idea where I'm stamping it onto this paper and I can't really see where it is. Pick a dry spot there. And I need these colors again. So I don't need the granny apple green, but I do wanna use these ones. And I'll bring that card in again so you can see. This is the DSP from the hand pen petals that I used. And I just pulled in these colors here knowing that once they are toned down as the pastels, they'll kind of tie in with this. So I've pulled in this non-coordinating stamp set, but I feel like it still ties in well enough with the hand pen petals. And then I've chosen the Misty Moonlight cardstock that does coordinate with this DSP. So I'll ink this image up with Versamark, just like I did with the other one. I am just going to use my finger again as opposed to the daubers or sponges. If you have sponges, those would work too, I think. They are not as pricey to add to your collection as daubers if you wanted to be able to use a different one per color. There we go. So now what I'll do is course I went and uh, filled my container with water so I'm just going to grab something else to put that on I think I can just use a silicone sheet that's nearby sorry for that so now I can just scrape some of the mossy meadow and then just wipe that blade off a little bit of the coastal cabana and then a little bit of the Knight of Navy. And then wipe the blades off. So now I'll just pick up the mossy meadow and I'm going to just gently come over where I can tell the leaves are. And I'm just trying to go up until where I see the flowers start. And then I'll go in over the Coastal Cabana. The, well, these larger ones, I wanted them to be done in Coastal Cabana. And I have my stamp set here because the image is clear and I can't really tell exactly where things are. If I just sort of follow this as my guide as to where to apply that color, I find that helps. So I'll do these flowers here. And then I can see a little bit then where I can try to come back in and add the green in between that stem there. If you had Q-tips, that would probably work too. And that would help you get into the more detailed area. So these are the larger flowers that I wanted done in Coastal Cabana. And then I'm just gonna go over these little detailed ones here with the Knight of Navy. There we go. And you know what? I have these little Q-tips here from yesterday. So I will actually apply, see if I can get in between those with some green on this little stem area that's in between the flowers. Now that I've applied the blue, it might not work to go over there, but We'll see how it works, okay? Now what I'll do is just wipe that off with that tissue again so that I have as much of the white showing in between as possible. There we go. So, there. So now you have the multi-toned image you just have to stamp once and then you've got all of that fun color on there now i'll show you i'm going to just get this out of the way and then i might even bring a little bit more coastal cabana back in over top of the tips of this one here and make that a little deeper there we go felt like that was a little light 
And now that the flower is already colored once, I can kind of stay just to the flower and make it a little deeper. And then I'm actually gonna come over this leaf again. There we go. So now it's got a little bit more depth to it. And then this way, I'll complete this, the assembly of this after when we're working on the wave one. But now that sort of ties in with the rest of the DSP. So I did not attach that one initially because I wanted you guys to be able to see how that all coordinates there. So then we'll put that one together while we work on this one here. So who all has the poppin' pastels or your old pastels? Let me know if you guys have them. And if you have the old ones, do these new soft pastel assortments interest you? The one difference is, is that if you've got the really old ones, they are not our current colors anymore. And these ones will be coordinating because they've actually made them in our colors. I find the same thing with the watercolor pencil crayons. The old ones that were out many years ago, they were not, I don't even think back then, they were actually colors that were current to Stampin' Up! at that time. They were just colors. And now they're made to be our colors, which is really nice. So I'm going to use this one here that has more of the um, differentiation in color there, the variety of color. And then <clears throat> I'll save this one here. So I'm gonna use the little bird that comes in that stamp set. So that is in case you didn't see it very well in the flyer, it's this image here. And I'm using this one little bird. This one's adorable too. All right, and I have memento ink for that. So I'll stamp my little birds on there. The trick with this one is if you're not one that likes to cut the rubber, which I don't, I like to keep this all intact. So just make sure that you don't have any halos before you stamp. The first time I used this, I did not do that. And I was super frustrated. See right there? Because I had finished my card. I did this as an afterthought, added the little birds and I got a halo on my project. I feel like it doesn't matter how advanced a stamper or beginner stamper you are, that is one thing we all can um, accidentally do. There we go. So we've got some birds in there. And then I also wanted to add in the little detail that I put here. So I've got the little spatter of black and pool party is what I put on there. So I'm just gonna move this one out of the way while I add that so that I don't end up with it all over my card that's finished. But I'll show you guys this up close in a second. I love how it adds just a little bit something extra. I hope you guys don't ever get tired of my spattering oh jeepers that one was too much I did not mean to make this big blob of black there but I love how it adds a little bit there and that's okay I don't mind that that's there the wave for sure is my favorite stamp out of this bundle it's beautiful I think it is a beautiful wave stamp anyway so now we've got that whole layer ready to go and need to make sure that's all ready so we'll start building this I have just like I showed you guys the other day this piece here is two inches by four inches and that's going to be my spacer underneath here spacer or expander or whatever you want to call it so I'm going to take this DSP I feel like there's no sense in covering this whole strip behind there with the DSP when all you see is this little portion on either end. So I like to save my DSP, especially when it's one that's so pretty and that I really love. If it's one that I'm like, oh, I just need to use this up, then I might not do this. But with this one here, I am going to just take a three quarter inch strip and another three quarter inch strip 
and those are going to get glued on either end of that. And then that helps me save all of this DSP in the middle so that I have even more to make more of these cards with. Because other than this DSP, this is really just cardstock. It doesn't use a lot of expensive materials. So you can really get a lot of cards with these products out of just your basic cardstock, some twine and your stamps and ink, other than these little bits of DSP. So we'll get those attached. I like to use my um, snail or not snail, I keep calling it snail, the uh, stamp and seal for bits of DSP like this. Otherwise I don't tend to use the snail or keep calling it that the seal a lot. So I'll just attach these here. Now I think I saw some comments on what the old ones and the new ones interest you after the waves. I love these new ones with this wave. I was very excited when this came together today. I knew I wanted to show you guys some pastels. Now, the reason I'm cutting this, there's a little bit of some white showing along the end there, and I like to just make sure that I clean that up. If you guys have uh, watched me live before, you know that I like to take those little bits off so then that does not bother me afterwards, because if I left it there, we all know it would. Okay, so now this layer here will just get attached. I'm going to position this above because then I can use that, the original card, as my guide as to where I am going to place this little strip here. Now to put this strip down, I will use tear and tape because I'm applying it to a textured layer. This layer has been textured with the painted texture embossing folder, which I feel goes really well with the wave look. It goes really well with a lot of different things. It's the one I used yesterday as well behind the rainbow. So it goes well with clouds, it goes well with waves, it goes well with ice cream. All right, so now this can just get lined up to there. And that, no freezing? It is freezing for someone. Hmm. Hopefully it it might just be your connection there, Ramona. Hopefully it resolves. Hopefully the replay is good too. Though being live here with us is way more fun. <laughs> okay, so now I've got this here can go onto my card base. I have not wrapped anything around this layer, but I will first just distress the edges a little bit. You guys know me in this. I find I, I don't know, it just gives it a little bit of something extra. Oh, I'm glad you like that one, Terry. The reason I use the white paper spacer, Audrey, that's a perfect question, is so that they line up because I could just use a ruler and just make sure that they are straight from here to here. But I find if I attach them to the spacer, then I know that they're just gonna meet up and it gives it a little bit more stability as well. But you totally could just place it right down if you're comfortable using a ruler. I'm not sure if Aoife is here tonight, but she would get out her ruler and she would probably just glue it straight down, hold the ruler, and then line the other one up to it. That's the only reason, really, that I use the spacer. I'm glad you asked that though. Especially if you're short on white cardstock, then, or even if you wanted to use just scrap paper like printer paper, you could probably use that as a spacer as well. But if you're short on white cardstock, then don't use it or just use printer paper. So now I've got my tape on the back. Again, I'm using tape as opposed to stamp and seal just because this is textured and I like to. Um, Make sure that it's stuck really well. You can't even find your ruler. You could, I guess, use your grid paper as your guide, especially if you have one that's numbered. This one isn't numbered. So if you're going to use your grid sheet as a guide, I find that it's easier when you have one that's numbered, but it'll work still. All right, so there we go with that. Now look how much DSP you save, because you're not gonna see it anyway. So now, I'm gonna do the same thing with this layer here 
and I'll distress the edge. I'm so excited for all of you guys who have signed up for the Waves Retreat and have this stamp set to give this a try. I just think that it's so pretty with the pop and pastels technique. There we go. Now this I will just glue together and I have cut this so that the white sits inside the stitched rectangle edge. If you don't have the stitched rectangles, you can just cut some rectangles. I'll tell you guys what size this is just in case you don't have the stitched rectangles and you want to know roughly what size you could cut these to. They are, the white is four and an eighth by about two and three quarters. It's slightly bigger just to fit within the stitched lines and the stitched rectangle is three inches by a little over four and a quarter close to four and three eighths there we go now this will just get glued down there the hardest part of this card is looping the twine through the greeting label and tying a bow that's probably the most difficult part. Hi, Jerry. I actually have an old distressing tool. I just never dig it out, which is kind of silly, but I do have a few of them. It was one of those things that when it retired, I was like, I love this. I'm not letting it go, but I always forget to go find it. So look at that. There we have this. Now I just need to do the greeting. The greeting labels that come in this die set are very pretty. This is one, and then there's a larger one that looks like this. It would have been useful had I kept all those. I've got so many projects on the go, I have so many die sets out. So this is the die set that you get with the Waves of the Ocean. So this one here is the smaller label. It's probably in my magnetic tray because it has just been used, but then this is the larger one. So you get both of those. And I have seen where some people have actually layered them within each other. So that's fun as well. I'll just use the small one though. And then you get all of these fun clouds. You get the detailed layers for the clouds. There's a die for the um, seagull, I think it is, on the little, the perch there. Okay. Again, this is probably the hardest part of the whole card. So I'm going to use Memento and the little happy birthday from the stamp set. And those halos I was telling you about, you want to just make sure that you don't have any of those on your stamp before you go to use it. End up like me. There we go. Sometimes I find it's easier to tap the stamp down onto your, or the ink pad down onto the stamp. I kept getting a little blur on the H because I wasn't applying even pressure when I went down. So I find sometimes if, you, if you're if you running into that problem, try taking your ink pad and just gently tap down on your stamp instead. And hopefully that will help you avoid that issue. I have found that it's sometimes helpful for me There we go. So that's the little happy birthday. Now, before I go ahead and attach that, I wanna wind some twine through there. And I've got my dimensionals handy as well. Again, I still have the, um, the old twine. So I've got this nice big roll. So I'm feeding this through the, Here, I'll do that again. I'm feeding this from the top to the back, and then I can come up on the other side. And then I wanna wrap this around here. And I actually need to send that through the other way so that it is facing the right way for me to tie a bow because I'm tying it on this end. So I'm going through the top to the back back up through the other end and then I'll wrap this around and I'll do the same thing again. I wanted it to go around twice. So that is my reasoning for this. Whoopsie. Just don't uh, 
pull the wrong end or you have to do it again, which is exactly what I did. Okay. This is why I said this part is like the hardest part. <laughs> it's not really that hard. You just got to get this all cinched up. There we go. Now I can wrap this around and I need to give myself a little bit more length of that. It would probably be easier if I did the trick where I usually just take two pieces and then wrap one. Okay. So now I've got enough here to tie a bow. So now I want to just cinch this around so that I have two tails at the front. And then what I did was I dimensionaled my tag in place so that all of this was held down. So this is now wrapped around here twice. Now I'm going to just flip my tag over. This is about where I want that to be. So you can see there, I'm going to flip this over. I will stick two dimensionals over top, maybe even three. So this is going to hold the twine down and also hold my label in place. See what I mean about winding that through was the hardest part of all. Okay, so now I'll just flip this over and then I can stick my label down. And then I just wanna make sure that I don't have twists in this. So I'm just going to adjust that. Okay, and this one here, I'm just adjusting this so that they're not twisted. There we go. So now I'll actually dimensional this in place and then I'll tie my bow. That way I'm not fighting with trying to tie that bow while things are not held down. Otherwise I'll just keep lifting this piece of cardstock off the table while I try to tie the bow. If, Whenever possible, I anchor whatever it is down that I'm gonna tie the bow around because then I find it just keeps it nicely in place for me while I'm trying to tie it. So then this is just going to get centered as best as possible. There we go. And then now this is held down and I can tie my bow nicely. But I will use my trick with the little glue dot still. I still find that that helps keep the knot from unraveling on me. So I've got this little glue dot here. Now I'll just tuck it underneath where the knot is gonna go. And I'm tying the knot over top of the little edge of the die cut. Now that little glue dot does not wanna let go of my finger. So that one went in the garbage. And now I've got another one. That one worked a little better. So now I've got the little glue dot underneath where I'm tying my knot. So there's my knot. I stuck it down to the glue dot there. So you can see now it's nicely stuck. And then I can tie my bow. There. I have way too much of the twine though. I did not need to cut that quite so long, but that's okay. So here, look at all that that I have to cut off. But now it's nice and simple. I could add rhinestones if I wanted to, but I think I'm gonna leave it without for now and then decide first who's getting this before I go and make it all blingy. But super simple. There we go. I need to stick another dimensional under this side though because my original card keeps lifting off. I had to readjust this bow a few times on this one. So the dimensional under there is not sticking down very well but that's an easy fix. There we are. Whoops. So what do you guys think? Is that something you'll give a try? I'll see if there's any comments. Well, I give you guys a second to catch up on this one and then I'll switch over to the assembly of the other card. Thanks, Linda. 
How many of you guys have this Waves of the Ocean bundle either on its way or you've already got it? I know a few of you watching are doing the retreat with me. So you will be getting yours. The box arrived the other day. I'm very excited that those are all here. Thank you. I feel like it's uh, simple enough, but pretty. I love how the wave turned out. I don't know if that's fair to even say when it's my own card, but awesome. I'm glad you'll try it, Brenda. Do you have the pastels as well? Now, this one is not one that's gonna be part of the retreat because it involves the pastels and that's not something that we required that you guys get but you definitely can go ahead and create it after if you've got white and navy cardstock because you got, or in the twine, because you guys will have everything else. Yeah, definitely, Terry. You can use this technique with pretty much any solid image or like anything with detail that you can apply the chalk to. You can, it's a definitely a versatile one. Flowers, maybe even the rainbows. It would be fun with the rainbow stamps, actually be neat to try it with that and your Versamark. Okay, so we'll put those aside and I will finish up this card here so that I can show you guys how this one will turn out. So I've actually pulled in the thanks from the hand pen stamp set. So I told you guys that I was using the art gallery stamp set, which is true. I just grabbed the thanks from hand penned petals so that I could use that. And I have actually seen different techniques where people have colored these ones in with the pastels, but I'll save those for another time. I wanted this one to just be the poppin pastels, but definitely you can still color in an outline image using your pastels as well. So now we'll finish this one up. All right, so I used Memento, and I just stamped the thanks underneath here. So there we go. That's nice and simple. And now I'll do the same thing as before. I just want to make sure that that is nice and dry. Sometimes Memento doesn't dry super fast on the basic white. Now, I had another layer that I was going to put inside the card, but I'm not seeing it, so I might have to quickly cut another white layer for inside so you can see the finished inside of this card. So that's gonna go in here, but I first have a piece of this white crinkle seam binding. I want to wrap that around here first and just tie a bow before I attach that down. It's unfortunate this ribbon is on back order. It is a ribbon that I use all the time. This one and the white from the flowers for every season. Do you guys find you have a go-to ribbon? This one is definitely one of mine in part because the white is so neutral, but also you can color this ribbon to coordinate with your projects if you just color it with your blends. So that's something that I tend to do often. So, you know, here I have not attached this down to my the next layer. So it's always a little harder to try to hold that piece of paper down while I'm tying the bow as opposed to if it was just already anchored down and then I try to hold the knot of your bow when you're cinching back your tails if you hold the knot down while you're doing that it's a lot easier to ha not have it unravel on you while you go and then the other tip I have is I'm just holding that there like that okay so now I can attach this to here and then I'll clean up the tails and I'll use my tear and tape because I've got ribbon. It's going over top of ribbon, so I always like to use tear and tape when it's sandwiching a layer with ribbon. I agree, Brenda. Oh, Sandy, I hope you have fun creating with this one this weekend. You'll have to uh, come back and share what you make with it. It's so pretty. I can't wait for our retreat. I'll be um, 
finishing up my samples so that I can send out the supply list so that you guys can all make sure you have the inks and things like that at home. Or if you decide that you really want some, you can always add them to an order that we'll have going in before the retreat. Excuse my reach again. Whoopsie. I need to uh, clean some adhesive off of my scissors. Can you see that? Somebody, I, who knows? I don't think it would have been me, but you never know. Sometimes glue just gets on them. Bits. There we go. So now I'll attach this here with dimensionals. And then I think I need to recut my last piece that will go on here because I am not seeing it. And then I'll show you guys the inside of the card. There we go. And then I'll... Hmm. Okay, so the inside of this, this is like a center panel or a center flap card. So this is gonna go on the inside. I have put these textured panels on the side. Those are embossed with the greenery embossing folder. So I thought that sort of tied in with the floral here. I wasn't sure if it was like too busy. I don't know. I don't normally go quite so busy, but you guys can let me know what you think of that. And I just need to grab the strip of DSP because I'm not seeing it. So this is the, is that the pattern? There we go. So I just need a half inch strip of that. So this is from the hand pen petals. I love this one. This is probably one of my favorite patterns in that pack. And I just need myself a half inch strip. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing with this one here. I hid my little cutter underneath the pack of paper. Okay, so I have this piece for inside, but this looks rather plain. So what I like to do with this is just cut a coordinating piece. So whatever pattern I've put on the front, I just like to take a half inch by, oh, it's three, not four, a half inch by three inch strip of DSP. And then this will decorate the inside just a little bit. So this is just going to go across here. Now, if you wanted to turn this into a gift card holder, instead of just putting this half inch by three inch strip here, you would cut a second piece of white. So I'll show you guys that. So you would take a, this is one and a quarter by three. So you would put that along the bottom and you would only tape the three sides. And then you could line this along the top and that would create a pocket. Does that make sense? Thank you, Sandy and Ramona. So let me know if that makes sense, where you would just turn this into a little pocket and then just tape these three sides so that the top was left open and then you could have a little gift card pocket inside your center flap card. So you could switch it out for birthday. You could still give a thank you gift card, but there's so many different occasions that you could turn that into a gift card holder. You know what, I may as well. Let's just go for it. We're gonna turn this into a gift card holder. So I'll attach this piece of DSP along the top. Whoops, there we go. And then for this, I have the really skinny tape, and that's what I'm going to use. I'm not gonna use quarter inch tear and tape because I feel like that will close the pocket in too much. So I'm just gonna run this really thin tape all the way along the edges. And I'm not gonna bring it in from the edge, I want it right up to the edge so that it leaves as much space in the pocket. Hey, Darren. I miss you guys too, in person, like just, I miss you <laughs> in general. 
Does this mean spring is coming? Man, I sure hope so. Darren, what's the weather like where you guys are? For those of you who don't know who Darren is, Darren is um, mom. She's our friend, and she is mom to Juliet, Sydney, Lena, and um, Kala. So we miss you guys. I was just looking at uh, Facebook memories of Lena yesterday and the day before. I loved one of those pictures. Darren, you know which one it is. <laughs> so I've got the tape on these three sides. Darren, you'll have to come catch the lives here with us, and then that way it'll be kind of like you're with me. I wish we were coming to visit you guys. It's your beautiful new home. So now with this top side here, that's going to go along the top. And then we'll have the little pocket. Darren, this paper actually reminds me of you. Don't you think? Look at that florally paper. So now this one here, I will glue down here and then I have my little gift card pocket. And I will just glue this one with Tombow. Except for, I set it over there. I did it just like the other day. I set it over there with um, no lid on it. I should know better, shouldn't I guys? And then you have to pull the little plug of glue out. So any plans to come back to Manitoba anytime soon, Darren? I think I heard, do you guys have visitors coming out to see you? Hi, Diane. All right. So that is now our thank you center flap gift card holder card. And um, these ones here, I should give you guys the measurement of this as well. So this panel is a four and a quarter by five and a half. It's just the single panel because this mechanism here is the fold. So you don't need to have a full card size. So it's just the four and a quarter by five and a half panel. And then this section is three and a quarter by eight and a half. So this portion there folds. And then I just put one inch by four inch strips here. They're just butted up against this folding panel. I could always come back and show you guys the actual construction of this type of card with um, one of the other bundles, if that's something that you guys want to see the full construction of. Thanks, Darren. It's the old pop and pastels technique. So that's done with chalk. If you want to catch the replay, I'll post this on my page so you can always go back and catch the replay of how to do that one. But it was lots of fun. Super easy. So there we go. I'm glad the family's coming to see you. Well, I'll have to hop in their suitcase. Hi, Aoife. We were uh, talking about um, how you would apply these strips of DSP earlier. You'll have to catch the replay so that uh, you can hear what we were saying. We're talking about measuring with a ruler versus uh, using the spacer. So there we go. That is the Poppin Pastels. I hope you guys learned something new. I hope you will dig out your old ones. If you've got them and give it a try, just grab your Versamark, find a stamp set that you think would work well with it and send me a picture or post a picture. Show me what you guys have made with it. I'd love to see. So there's your challenge for tonight. I'm going to write that one down too. And I will come back. I'll have to go through the comments from yesterday to see who shared. And then I will post who the winner is of yesterday's draw so that I can send you a rainbow card. And then if you have shared today's video, make sure that um, you come back and let me know that you shared. I'll give you a draw ballot for that. And then if you come back and post a photo in the comments of something you make with pop and pastels, if you've got them at home, then you'll get an extra entry and I will send you a waves card. So how about that will be our prize for today's viewers who share and or come back and post a photo. So I just need to write myself that, um, what the criteria is so that I don't have to come back and watch myself so that I can hear what I promised you guys as a draw. So sharing or post a photo or both of the pop and pastels. 
and then you will get entered into the draw to receive a waves card in the mail from me. And that can be, because it's a card made by me, I can actually mail those. They don't have to be just within Canada. When we have product prizes, I can only send those within our country. But when it's a handmade card, I can mail that anywhere. So wherever you are, if you would like to share or post a photo of what you've made, please do. I can't wait to see. I hope some of you will come back and post pictures of something that you've made. And then in some more upcoming lives, I have some more mail. Linda, I don't know. I think I did message you that I got mail from you yesterday. And I've got more beautiful cards from Linda to share with you guys. So those will be coming soon as well. There's another fancy fold that I want to case. I love when I get these fancy fold cards from her or any cards. And then um, I like to share them with you guys and whatever they inspire me to create. So that is the cards for tonight. Just keep in mind that the art gallery stamp set and dies are 20% off for the month as long as supplies are still in stock. And then the Waves of the Ocean product is also available. The DSP, the bling, and the foil while supplies last. Otherwise, the bundle itself will carry over into the annual catalog. And I will let you guys know soon when I can no longer take registration for the Waves product for the retreat anyway but we will still afterwards even if you miss registration for the actual event you would still be able to purchase the tutorials if that was something you guys wanted to do all right i don't think i missed any questions if i did i'll scroll back through them but i will definitely go live some more between friday and sunday let me know what next bundle you guys want to see from the spring is in bloom promotion do you guys have any requests? I, um, let me just see if I can find it real quick. Hi, Pam. All right, so which ones have I not? Before we go, I'll just quickly review. I have not yet shown you guys the Garden Wishes bundle. I was thinking that one would have been pretty with pop and pastels as well, but these were the ones that I wanted to feature with that technique, something that's not on sale and then something that was just so that give you guys a little bit of variety. I hope you don't mind that I showed you two stamp sets tonight. The Hydrangea Haven Bundle. I don't have Pansy Patch, so if you guys think that you would like me to have David come, I'll have to message him and see if he'd be willing to come and do a live. The Quiet Meadow Bundle, I love this one. I love the dies. They are a really good standalone set of dies. I've already done the Seascape bundle. I have not yet done Sweet as a Peach, but what I should have done is I should have showed you guys the Pop and Pastels. I don't even know where those cards are. Let me see if I can find them real quick to show you guys. Um, oh, it's not in this one. The other, I did a Pop and Pastels when I did the Peach. These are, here, I'll show you guys these real quick. And uh, maybe while I show you these, Ethan will end up finding the Poppin' Pastels. I did actually do the Sweet as a Peach with Poppin' Pastels when we did our launch last May. Our team did a launch, but with this one here, look, he found it. So I'll show you guys the Poppin' Pastels with the Peach. All right. So this one here, I'll give you that one back. That one's not finished. So this is the Poppin' Pastels with the sweet as a peach i stamped them on the back here and janet these ones i did do with daubers as opposed to using my finger so i actually just took the daubers straight to the chalk so i had a dauber on my finger and i took the chalk right off of here or the pastels right off of there and then i applied it to the images and i believe i might have done one by one so that i could see where i was going with building this background here and then that's also how i colored in this peach so believe it or not that is the poppy parade so i just went really soft with it i didn't get a lot of pastel on my dauber at a time and then it kind of gave this like peachy colored effect as opposed to um poppy parade so that's poppin pastels with the sweet as a peach and then these cards here are created with the peach stamp set and just ink and then the DSP. So this was sort of a um, progressive. So this was the, the simplified version where the DSP did the work. 
This one here, I did some stamping on the side here. There's cat hair. <laughs> and then we also stamped the peach. And then this one here was the poppin' pastels. And then this one here, I turned the peaches into cherries. So same layout, four different ways. So you can see all of those. And then I also did the cherries with the blends and vellum. And then I did it with the peach there as well. So that was some of my peach projects. I can't remember if I did a scrapbook page with the peach line or not, but there we go. So that's sweet as a peach. So let me know, comment away and let me know if there's another bundle. I have not done welcoming window yet, but I did do what's cooking the other night. So I would love to come back and show you guys more bundles. If there's a particular one or particular techniques you guys want to learn, let me know, comment here, and then I will be able to make a list of the things that you guys want to see. I have loved being here all these nights. It's been fun. Even when the day is crazy, I just really enjoy being able to come and stamp with you guys. <laughs> There's tons, Sandy. There's like so many to digest in one visit. So we'll just have to turn them into more live sessions and then they'll be a little bit easier to digest, I feel like. All right. Quiet meadow or welcoming window. I'm going to start a note for myself. I really like both of those ones and I have not played with Welcoming Window yet, ever. So I might have to uh, open that one and see what I can come up with for you guys. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. I will post again to let you know when I'll be live. I'll try to give you more notice than I have the last couple nights. The last couple days we've been juggling around lots of other things, but um, try to come up with a schedule. And I will come up with a mystery card for you guys so one of these nights that'll be window one easter theme Ooh, you guys are giving me some ideas all right so i'll post a mystery stamping for one of these nights maybe this weekend either that or early next week we'll have to do a mystery card and then you guys can stamp with me is anyone up for that let me know in the comments. I'll come back and read them if uh, there isn't time to see your comments before I shut this off. Do you guys all know what a mystery card is? A mystery card is where like, for example, if this was my card, I would tell you all the measurements of these pieces. So I would say you will need a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by eight and a half. You would need another color of cardstock that is four by five and a quarter. So I give you all the measurements, but I wouldn't necessarily tell you what colors. And then that way you'll pick your own colors. You would pick your own stamp set. I would have mine and then you guys would just stamp at home along with me. So we should do that. I will, sorry, I have the hiccups now. I will come up with one and then you guys can come back and stamp with me. And then of course the challenge would be for you to come back and post it in the comments. You're off next week. So do you guys have spring break in Ontario next week? Aoife, I think you are in Ontario as well. And Darren is. Darren, are you guys on spring break as well? Our kids have two more weeks. Ethan usually gets his birthday off for spring break. His birthday is two weeks from tomorrow. And crazy enough, Darren, he's gonna be 18. All of you, I'm going to have an 18 year old. It's bonkers. So his birthday is two weeks from tomorrow and that's his last day before spring break. And since grade two, he has never had school on his birthday because it has either fallen on spring break or the last two years, it was COVID. So he hasn't had to have a birthday at school. Though for his 18th birthday and his last year of school, maybe it would be fun for him to be at school on his birthday. And he says there will be gym riot dodgeball and he loves all things that are like extracurricular at school. So it'll be fun. He'll have a fun day at school. He'll just have lots of things to cram in with us in the so evening. Because we usually like to do um, like Starbucks drink, maybe Denny's. The places that have free things on your birthday. He loves to go do the tour of the city and do those things. So there will be less time to fit it all in. Mongos. <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. We will give you a grad photo, Darren, for sure. We haven't ordered them yet. He's got to uh, choose, or we all have to choose which ones we want. But it's crazy. 18-year-old. All right. Well, that was fun, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Please come back and show me what you guys make with pop and pastels. I can't wait to see. All right. See you guys soon. Good night.